So the biggest takeaway I can give you is this new year is a fresh opportunity for you to start your photography journey. Truly every day is a great opportunity. I know if you click on this video, you are feeling eager and definitely have what it takes to be a great photographer. My name is Sunny and I'm gonna go over some items that I wish I knew when I first started photography. Well, she tried. At least, you know, she... And on top of that, I'm gonna tell you how you can level up your photo game every single time you pick up your camera. Okay, so let's start with square one. You're gonna need something to actually take photos with. If you've done any browsing on the internet, you know that it is just a plethora of information, camera information included. It can literally feel like there are thousands of options for you to choose from. If you're just starting out and you want a well-rounded camera, what I started out with was the Olympus OMD EM10 Mark III. Bruh. I could never remember this name. Even when I had the camera, I could not remember it. Long name aside, I did actually love this camera. It was a great warm up to the actual feeling of holding a camera and using a camera. This is where I built my foundation on learning all about the different camera settings, which we'll get to. I found the menus to be really easy to navigate and it was really small so I could pop it in my bag and just pull it out anytime I wanted to take a photo on the go. This was a really cute camera. It was a really cute camera. <laughs> I have since switched to the Sony a7 II and I'm still currently using this. I love her so much. We've been through so much together. This has since been discontinued, unfortunately, but some other great cameras for entry-level photographers are the Sony a6000, the a6400, the a6100. Can you tell I like Sony? <laughs> Sony cameras are packed with a punch, so it can take a second to get used to how they work. But once you get the hang of it, I find they're so straightforward to use and they're super versatile in any type of situation. They really are great mirrorless cameras and switching from the viewfinder to the actual screen when taking photos is such a game changer. I think they're so modern and up to date in the camera world, you really can't go wrong. However, I know if you're interested in Canon, the Canon M50 and the Canon Rebel series are also great places to start. Maybe right here. With that said, there is something you need to know that is fundamental to photography or what I believe to be fundamental. Your skill is what makes you a great photographer, not the gear you have. This could honestly open up a door for a entire different conversation regarding the gear versus the art, but especially at the stage, especially as a beginner, know that great photos are not dependent on how expensive your camera is. Photography is not meant to be gay kept. Not everybody has the means to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on a camera. Photography is for everybody. so. If all you have access to right now is the camera on your iPhone, that is perfectly suitable. The best camera equipment is the one you already have. And you'll know when you've outgrown your camera when it starts to feel like it's working against you. Your camera should make your job faster, easier. If it's slowing you down in any way or you feel like it's just not capturing what you're looking for, those will be the kinds of signs that it's time to upgrade. And if you're still on a budget, purchasing used will always be an option for you. I recommend purchasing a used camera body versus a used camera lens, but to each their own. As long as it's not completely busted, then it shouldn't hinder you from growing and learning the essentials of photography. Photography trifecta. If you haven't heard already, there are three main gals to photography, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Pretty much every camera has the option to shoot in auto mode, but I seriously just recommend start off with manual mode right away. This will force you to learn about these three settings right from day one and to quickly get them under your belt. And the reason manual mode is so important is because it really gives you the full scope in how your image will be captured. So quick crash course, these were kind of confusing for me when I first started, so I'm gonna explain them more in the practical sense rather than the technical sense. First on the list, aperture. This controls how much light enters the lens. The more light that comes through, the brighter your image will be. But what we really use this for is that depth of field, that delicious blurry background that we all want. To get that blurred background, that small depth of field, you wanna keep your aperture open and that will look like f1.2, f1.4, 2.8. And on the other end of the scale, a more closed aperture will look more like f6.5 all the way up to like f15 and beyond. Notice that the image here with an f2.8 has a much more blurred background than this one with an f15. I typically shoot portrait photography, so I like to keep my aperture on the low end of the scale. This really blurs the background and encourages the viewer's eye to focus on the subject of the photo. But bumping up your aperture is useful for taking photos that have multiple subjects in them or if you want to retain that detail in the background. So for instance, in family photos or in photos with multiple people in them, you'd want to kick up your aperture so that everyone stays in focus and nobody gets left behind. What did you say? Ohana means family. Family means nobody. nobody gets left behind. Oh, forgotten. Next up, shutter speed. This is just what it sounds like. 
Shutter speed is the speed at which the shutter closes as soon as you hit the shutter button. These numbers are measured in seconds and look like 1 over 50th of a second, 1 over 250, all the way up to like 1 over 6,000 and beyond. So fast shutter speed will close the shutter really fast and capture a sharp image, whereas a slower shutter speed will, as you'd expect, close the shutter much more slowly and you may capture some motion blur. So to give you an example, this image here is tack sharp because it had a fast shutter speed, whereas this image caught that motion blur because the shutter speed was much more slow. So this is a great example of using in-camera settings to create different artistic effects. Usually when you're taking photos, you wanna keep your photos nice and sharp and crisp, so a good rule of thumb is shooting between one over 250 and one over 500. This is where my camera's typically set at. However, it can be really fun to mess with your shutter speed, slow it down a little bit, and capture that motion blur. It's a really easy way to spice up your photos. And lastly, ISO, this controls how sensitive your camera will be to the light. This one is the easiest to understand as it pretty much is just artificial light that you can manually add to your photos in real time. So the higher your ISO number, the brighter your image will be, and the lower your number, the less bright it will be. It's actually really good practice to keep this number as low as possible because as you crank up that number, the more your camera will bring in that grain and that noise that you don't really want. So here's an example of a photo with low ISO. This was taken at ISO 100 versus this image, which is taken at ISO 900. And then this photo was taken at ISO 4000. As the number goes up, you can see that grain, that weird texture that gets added to your photo. So even though it might add more grain, don't be afraid if you need to kick up your ISO. This is just another aspect of photography that is there to help you. ISO is super great when you decide to shoot during golden hour, during that sunset. But it's winter time and the sun is setting way faster than you thought it would and it's, it's kind of cold and your model's getting cold and oh my god, you're getting cold and you haven't even pulled your camera out, you haven't even taken a photo and oh my god, you're losing more and more light. Don't panic, just increase your ISO, get your photos and call it a day. Okay, so we got through a lot of the technical stuff. So now let's ask ourselves, what type of photography do I even want to get into? What do I want to try out? Of course, it's always to your benefit to try out different styles of photography landscape, portrait, astrophotography. But the reason this is such a great question to ask yourself and to really sit on is because a lot of beginner photographers lack one vital aspect of their photos, and that's story. If you go into taking a photo and you're not really sure what you're photographing, that could translate into the image. What makes an image striking is that it stops the viewer and immerses them into the world of the photo. So my friends, this is how you're gonna level up your photo game every single time you pick up your camera. Every photo you take should have some type of purpose, some type of motif. Okay, so how do you actually tell stories through an image? You definitely don't have to feel like you need to reinvent the wheel or create the most lavish, amazing photo you've ever seen. But see if you can put together a few elements to play around with creating a narrative. So for instance, I took these photos when I was out walking with my friends. The color grading, the way the model interacts with the roses, this portrays the story of walking through a romantic garden. Simple elements, but when put together, the story is clear. Now these photos took a little bit more effort into the planning stage, but they immediately provoke a whimsical Alice in Wonderland type of vibe. This was achieved by the physical elements like the wardrobe, the grassy field, the table spread, and also in-camera elements such as the composition, the way I chose to use the lighting, and the editing. So you can use as few or as many elements as you'd like as long as the story is immediately recognizable. The whole point of photography is to capture moments in time, as cheesy as that sounds, so if you have the skill and the ability to put a couple things together to create a narrative, you're on the road to becoming a great photographer. All right, I have one final thing to share with you, and of course, this is the most important of all of them. If you have been hesitant to start photography or you feel like it's challenging to stick with it and you feel like you're just not improving, photography, just like so many other skills in life, really just comes down to showing up. Pick up your camera and take photos as often as you can. You are more than capable of taking a great photo and you're even more capable of taking your next best photo. But how are you gonna do this if you continue to sit on the couch, eating your hot Cheetos, just wondering if you're capable of taking great photos. I mean, even that might be a great setup for a photo op. I did something similar here when I first started photography and I was just getting into self-portraits. But how do you know if it's a good photo op if you don't take a photo of it? And there's something so special about the beginning stages of photography and feeling like you have no idea what the hell you're doing. Navigating all the aspects of taking a photo and trying to juggle all the different camera settings. If you make the conscious effort to set aside that judgment behind the confusion and move as a curious learner, it will honestly feel like magic when you finally snap a photo and you, you gasp because 
you just took your next best shot to date. And that is just one of so many other best shots that you're gonna be taking, as long as you pick up your camera. If you're feeling serious about portrait photography or wanna know more on how you can get started, I highly recommend watching this video next as it'll go over some basics on how to pose yourself. You can use this on self-portraits, of course, or you can use this information to funnel into your next photo shoot and use it on whoever you're taking portraits with. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.